Innovate or die. Have you heard that expression? Are you innovating with your small business? Are you actually growing and changing as the world changes around you? Or are you being left behind? The extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur. On today's episode, I've got the Director of Innovation for IBM Norway and the Nordic area. I've got Thomas Anglero, and I'm really glad to have you on the show. Welcome to the show, Thomas. Thank you very much, Alan. I am honoured to be invited and to be here. Thank you. We love having you here as well. And uh, we don't normally get people at very large companies on the show because we like to focus on entrepreneurship, startups and building businesses at the the more raw end of the spectrum rather than the big business end. But you've been at both ends, haven't you? You've built startups and you've worked for giant corporates. Exactly. And the way uh, my job is inside of IBM is that uh, I'm basically running a startup inside IBM. So I haven't changed, right? I'm a startup guy. So no, I'm not your big IBMer. I'm not, <laughs> if you met me in the street, you would, you, would, you would absolutely lose money in a bet if you thought I worked for IBM. <laughs> so you're a startup guy who's just managed to find some cash to do it with. <laughs> That's an interesting way to frame it. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of cash in IBM. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in the startup world, as probably all the people that listen to your podcast know that you're trying to start up your own idea and things like that. But as the head of innovation for IBM, what I do is go to customers and help them see the innovation that's within their company, identify what type of innovation they need. Because so many times we put the word innovation inside of the technology box. And what I see very strongly all the time especially in big companies who have CEOs who are 50 years old, 60 years old, they've been there 30 or 40 years, and going, I, I've done all these amazing things, you know who I am, type of thing, right? Today, and now today, we're in the month of June, almost July 2020, right? And we have all this post-corona effect. These leaders, and not just the CEO, I'm talking about the entire leader group team, or people who've done all these things, and everybody's finally, I'm in this powerful position, you know, they don't have competence in what we're dealing with now. No one does, right? How do you run your company now? The way your business model has worked, the way you set up your revenue model, that was great. But now with Corona, everything has changed. All the demographics has changed. The world of digitalization is you have to do it, right? Digitalization is like <sighs> breathing. It's like water. You just have to have it. And these people don't get it. They don't know how to do this whole world. And so Going forward, we're all on a clean slate, but they're not used to that. They're used to being, I have 30 years experience. I was there when this was installed. That has no relevance. So my job is to say, look, you're starting at scratch. And so what I talked to them about is cultural innovation, because before you can innovate, you need to know who the hell are you? You cannot start something saying, I've done seven startups before. I know what I'm doing. The best entrepreneur is someone who recognizes at every moment, at every opportunity, every day, this is a fresh moment to learn something. And it's something I'm going to see, something I'm going to reflect on, and that's going to take me to the next level. You cannot dwell and, and be proud of yourself of the past. You have to embrace the fact that every day in the future is what's going to lead you to success. The past won't lead you to success. The past is a false sense of security. And that's how I frame the world. And I deal with all these old companies and that's how I get them to see. And that's a really scary place to be when you've been, you know, I'm so proud of who I am. Look at all the boats I have and all the cars I have. And I say, it doesn't mean anything today because, you know, the bank's going to come take them all away anyway in about five minutes. So let's try to help you out in the next 10 minutes. Right. So, Thomas, I'm, I'm intrigued. Like, I love the view of the world because it is changing so fast and we need to get to grips with it. And if yeah. you don't tackle the change you're going to fall behind. Yes. But isn't innovation building on what is already there? Innovation is not creativity and coming up with new things. What is innovation to you? And what is this word? And how does it apply to life and business? Yeah. Well, how many days do we have, right? Because that's a <laughs> long, big question. <laughs> so innovation, I have an answer for people. When, when I tell people, you know when you're innovative, when people hate you. Okay, that's interesting. So you're ruffling a few feathers. 
Well, let's have a moment of you being truly innovative. If you're truly innovative, you wake up in the morning. Let's say you wake up before 5 a.m. You have a thought and you, you have that, oh, my God moment. You see something, you've connected dots that no one in the history of mankind has ever connected. And you're the first person to see this, to understand this. At that moment, you've got clarity. How many people do you now have to explain and convince on the planet Earth? About 7 billion. Do you think people are going to like you? I Remember? have spent my time not being liked for innovating, and it's not always the most comfortable exactly. or nice route to exactly. go. Exactly. Exactly. So innovation means if you're truly innovative, people don't like you because you're constantly not pitching, but you're constantly explaining yourself. You're constantly explaining to someone else who's never connected these dots. They're stuck in a different paradigm. They're stuck in their comfort zone. They're stuck in a, a false world or maybe a real world. And you have to say, no, things go like this, this, and this, and this is possible. And if we do this, this could happen. Remember the day the inter back in the late 80s when the internet came? How long did it take before people... Some people still don't know what the hell the internet is, okay? And that is a leap. Pre-internet and internet is a monster leap. And it's still taking society 20, 30 years to figure that one out. Now, here you are with your one sole little idea, and you got this, and now you have to explain to the world. You're not going to be like... Being innovative is not a fun thing. You know, and people want to say, oh, I'm really innovative. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a smart guy. It ain't all that much fun if you're truly innovative. It's going to cost. It truly is going to cost. And if you've done, if you're so innovative and you're so, if you're not risk adverse and you believe in your idea so much, you're going to do a startup, you're going to take your idea to the next level and you're going to try to make it happen. And then you really find how much it costs. But an innovative person, it doesn't matter because you know that your baby, your idea has to be born. And the cost, the anguish, the uh, <laughs> one meal a day, if you could afford it, the compromises that you have to make to make sure that you're feeding your family and taking care of your kids, the emotional compromise that when the family comes home or you come home from work, you didn't make any money, you didn't have any sales, but you have to put on a happy face so that the kids have a good childhood and that they see that Papa's happy, but then actually Papa's destroyed on the inside. These are all stories from my past, you know? Because I'm doing everything I can to make my idea, my thing come to life. That's part of being innovative. The thing is, we're all caught up today. We're caught up with Elon Musk. Oh, he's so innovative. You know, listen to his stories on how what happened with PayPal. It's hell. I mean, that is horrible stories. <laughs> and, you, know, you see some pictures. You see Elon Musk back in those days. He was losing hair. Today, Elon Musk has a full head of hair. I think it helps when you have a billion dollars. You somehow come up with you magically a full head of hair. <laughs> but he lost all his hair because the guy went through hell, right? So I'm not trying to dodge your question. I'm just giving a real world picture of being innovative is not so cool. It's, it's the guy who, or the girl, doesn't matter, who sits alone in a lunchroom and doesn't know they're sitting alone in a lunchroom. But everybody else in the lunchroom is sitting at a table together and they're going, what's wrong with that guy? What's wrong with that girl? Why are they always sitting by themselves? They think they're different. They think they're better than us. What's wrong with them? And actually that innovative person, they don't know that they're sitting alone. They're so caught up in their thoughts and their passion and their idea. They're just grabbing some food to eat something, get back to their thing and go back to work. Do you understand? Different places, different people. We have different perceptions. So that's one answer to your question. I'm sorry I have these long answers. But the other answer is, what is innovation? There are different forms of innovation. As I already said, there's technical innovation. There's cultural innovation. There's so many different types of innovation. And so... There is no one innovation. For me, innovation is when you, you believe in you so much that you're willing to make your life completely uncomfortable to bring your baby to life. Then you're being innovative. You're gonna get really, if you're really willing to get uncomfortable with yourself, you're starting to approach innovation. Innovation is not supposed to be comfortable. Elon Musk now could buy anything he wants, but the man has gone through hell, and we only embrace the fact that after 30 years of being innovative, he now has a billion dollars. That's not the part of innovation that, that's real, right? Not many of us get there, but it's a nice picture. But in, true, in reality, it, it hurts, but it's worth it. I don't want to tell you a negative picture, but it's worth it. It's worth believing in you. One of our favorite sayings at Pop-Up Business School is, everything you want in life is outside your comfort zone. Otherwise, you'd already have it. And that's one of the ones that drives me to go, if this thing needs changing, if this thing needs doing... It's going to be outside my comfort zone and I'm going to have to get uncomfortable. And that sounds weird saying I'm going to get uncomfortable with you, Thomas. But we have to get uncomfortable if we want things to change.
Absolutely. One one of the things, and I just had a very intense talk with a friend of mine yesterday who just got a, a incredible job opportunity in another company. And I was telling her that, um, you know, I had to tell her something that was very uncomfortable to help her to grow, to be prepared for this next huge promotion. And my intro, what I, my preface, as you use this at, my preface is what I'm about to tell you, I only mean with respect. And then I tell them the uncomfortable news because we only grow when we are uncomfortable, when somebody actually calls our BS, when um, we face who we really are, right? And then you know who's your real friend because a real friend will tell you that you are doing something wrong and that you shouldn't be, you know, playing with that person or whatever. You know, a fake friend doesn't look out for you that way. So, um, yeah, this is some intense stuff, but you face this stuff as an innovative person. You have to face your demons, you know. Can I share with you one story? I'm doing a lot of talking, but I just got this story. So I had a startup and maybe we'll get to it later, but I'll, I'll touch on it. I had a, my latest startup wasn't doing well at all. Not the first startup, not do well. Couldn't get anywhere. Couldn't get fun. I mean. I was three years in, three years in, failing. I mean, some sales, some this, some that, just couldn't do it. Anyway, I'm walking home from the store. I got my two plastic bags, you know, in my arms, walking home from the store. And all of a sudden, it hits me. I drop my plastic bags, people walking by me and stuff. I start crying. I'm a big guy. I start crying. I fall on my knees. This is like a dramatic moment. And it, the clarity hits me. I realized in that moment what I've been doing wrong. I realized that now my food is now pouring out of my plastic bags. I don't care, right? I'm having this insanely moment because I realized that everything is my fault. Everything was my fault. The way I saw people, the way I judged people, the way I looked at my startup, the way I saw life, I realized that I was having complete failure. Nothing was working because it was all my fault. It wasn't that this investor didn't believe me, he's an idiot. It wasn't that people can't appreciate this great idea. This is what all we do as a startup. We're always blaming other people. They don't get it. They don't see my vision. I realized it was 100% my fault. Everything, my personal life, my marriage, my kids, me being a horrible father, horrible husband, I, everything. I just sucked. It just clarity like you couldn't believe. I'm a big guy, grown man, crying on the street. I try to stop the tears. <laughs> I had to get the cans out of the street. I had to, they jumped off the curb <laughs> and had to pick up all my food from all over the place, put it in a plastic bag. Not one person who walked by me helped me out. And I thought, you know, this is in Oslo, Norway that this happened. This is not New York City where people really don't care. This is in Oslo that this happened. Picked myself up and cried myself home. Do you know from that moment, not day, that moment, things started getting better? I started getting money, funding more sales. It was as if the universe, or if you believe in God, whatever religion or whatever perspective you come from, it said I, it would not allow me to be successful until I called my own BS to the point I was prepared for life. You know, if you have a person who's immature, who's stuck in their bubble, who doesn't take risk and all that, does, it stays in their comfort zone, and you give them a million, a billion dollars, they're going to destroy the world. If you have someone who's really hit the ground and understands that life is love and you give them a million billion dollars, they don't make the world grow. So I felt that and I realized that from that moment on, and, and that's what led me to where I am now in IBM and all these things. I'm on the board of all these companies and oh, my future, I think it's going to go great is only because I had that one moment. That was my and I was um, I was 40 something years old, probably mid 40s when that happened. This isn't a story of when I was 20. This is mid 40s that I I imploded in the street. But from that moment on, I was reset. And I'm a totally different person now. But it took me after me to give everything I got into my startup and it was failing. I'm going to realize that my entire life and all my failures and every back conversation I had with people has always been and always will be my fault. See, this is a really interesting thing. And I think this is one of the elements that traps people has trapped me in the past sounds like it trapped you in the past is accepting that you create your world. And where this gets really difficult is when you're talking to people who don't think it's their fault and we have some victim mentality and actually sometimes some genuine victim problems where people have been hit down by the world, all sorts of things have gone on, and I'm there saying to them, well, you created this world. Like, well, I didn't ask for any of this. But there's a we're talking about a way of thinking, aren't we? Whereby if you take responsibility for what is in your world, it gives you the power to do something about it. 
If you're a victim, you're powerless. Is that the way you're thinking about this? Yeah, I don't frame it as a way of thinking. I frame it as a way of existing, right? Similar but different. And to people who are feeling sorry for themselves because things have happened to them, they grew up in a family that beat the hell out of them, they had somebody take advantage of them physically, mentally, and all that stuff. We've all had stuff happen to us in the past. And the reality, and then I'm going to break your heart, is that more stuff is going to happen to you. Accept it. But that's not a reflection of you. All right? So I'm, what I always like to tell people is that right now you feel you're in handcuffs. You have somebody molested you. Somebody touched you. Uh, your parents hit you. You had the uh, uncle who did this to you. I'll show you share a story I got yesterday. This woman, grown woman, talking to her yesterday on a podcast I do for IBM. And when we finally went off the air, she felt that she got to know me so well that um, – she told me a story about something her father did to her when she was four years old. That was horrible. What you have to do with these things is that they're just stories. And that's how I look at my past. They're just stories. My parents did that to me. That was the best they can do. And they weren't prepared for the world. They were incompetent with what they were at. They couldn't face reality. They, they just couldn't handle those moments very well. And that's that. Move on. But there's some people listening to this and going, I can't move on. Do you know how horrible that was for me? Oh, it was, it was, Nine, 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 nine. What do we do? Can we compare scars? Do you want me to list all my scars and as if my scars are also no scars? Life doesn't work that way. Life is hard. Shit is going to happen to you, but you move on. It's just stuff, man. But if you let that stuff, you hold on to every one of those things. They own you and you're stuck back there. That happened to you when you were six. You're still a six-year-old girl or a six-year-old boy. Let that stuff go. It's just stories. Who are you right now? This very second. <sighs> I felt that you could feel your lungs. This is who you are. You own every moment. Now, this very next second, I could decide to breathe or not to breathe. I decide about my entire future. I'm in control of everything. The past doesn't control me. It's just a bunch of stories. It's a bunch of things that I did wrong. Some mistakes I made. Mistakes other people made. But it's just stories now. I can self-correct and do whatever the hell I want, man. It's freedom. Why let stuff in the past hold you? Yes, it hurts. Of course. But they didn't know better. And that's how I frame a lot of the stuff in the past. I got stuff in the past and I look at it, I go, oh my God, this would make for a great Hollywood movie, right? Everybody has that in their head. If anybody even knew what happened to me, you know, I would make millions in Hollywood. It's just stories. I've started writing that movie based on <laughs> my one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Make sure you put in surround sound. I would love to see it in surround sound. The point, the point is, is that it's just, I frame it as just stories and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, but... Have your plastic bag moment like I did. Realize that everything is your fault. Even though you were four or six years old, you couldn't control it, and that's not your fault. Of course that wasn't your fault. But your parents or your uncle or your friend, they were stupid. Let it go. Because your life, this moment now, is your life. You could do and conquer and do all these amazing things. Are you lonely? Are you not with the person you want to be? All this stuff, these hindrances, is your fault. But you just haven't let the beauty out of you because you're stuck on something that happened in the past or a bunch of things that happened in the past. You connected these dots that should have never been connected. Let that stuff go. So let's get practical, Thomas. How do you actually let it go? Because I think this is really important and it's something I've had to work on for a long time. Yeah. How? how? What do I do? Because this is great. I love this. Yep. But how? This stuff is tough. This stuff is tough and is never you're never done. So let me just let's do that, right? So let me I'm not gonna just blow smoke up anybody's butt. Right now, for me, I don't think and I'm conscious I could, you know, I have my list in my head of all this crap that happened in the past, and I go, okay. I'm literally like that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I go, okay, more stuff's gonna happen. Okay. But it's not me. It's not me. I'm me. And you have to believe in that. I am me. You see someone you actually have the opportunity to go up to them and say, you make the world a difference to me. And you know what? Why would you be afraid of that? Because you'll change that person's world. I mean, people are afraid, like men are afraid of approaching women and saying these things. In actuality, I think 99% of the time, the woman, even if she has to, by culturally, she has to go, get away from me. And her heart, she's going, wow, that was beautiful. Thank you. What are we afraid of? What are you afraid of? How do you do this is that you forgive yourself. And you have to continue forgiving yourself. This is not a one-time thing like, dun da da I'm cured. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I curse. I didn't try not to curse. Um, this is a constant process reminding yourself and be forgiving yourself 
And so you're allowed to have these flashbacks of all these things that happened in the past and just say, okay, that happened back there. It's okay. And other things are going to happen. But here's the, here's the trick to the other things. When you meet someone and you want to prevent someone from being really bad to you, center yourself before you meet them. Center yourself in your mind and say, I'm going to be my authentic self. I was going to say when we shake hands, but now we don't shake hands anymore because of Corona. But I'll use that expression because everybody gets it right. So when you greet the person, you shake their hand. I hope we go back to that world. Have love in your heart. And that is something you got to get to. A lot of your listeners are probably saying, I don't use the word love. I'm, I'm a man. I'm, we don't talk about love. Then, then you're, you're not a man. A real man. Well, it's love, man. Holy crap. How can you not talk about love? You see a baby. Of course you're going to love the damn thing. Why would you embarrass to say that? Why are you embarrassed to tell a stranger, a complete stranger? You know, I took a group of Norwegian kids to New York City three years in a row. Uh, a company, one of my startups called Yhood. The world is your neighborhood. And to show them what I called was the New York's rotten apple. We didn't do anything fancy, no tourist trips, only to homeless shelters. I took them to the South Bronx. I took them to the crappiest neighborhoods in New York. And I said, you are here to give them dignity. We're coming from one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and I'm taking you at 17, 18 years old, and I'm taking you to the crappiest neighborhoods in New York, and you have to teach them dignity. They would go up to homeless people, and they would go, you like some food, and I love you. And they realized that the power of I love you. They would say it the first two times. They go, Thomas told us to say this. After day two, they couldn't stop saying it from their own heart because they realized is not that it doesn't cost anything, is that you are unleashing a power in the other person as if you're giving them this release, you're breaking the handcuffs and you just, you're just saying, forget about society's rules. I love you. Do you understand how much power we have? But we're caught up with all these things. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. No, no. I've, I've yet to see a book that says you can or can't other than, you know, the Constitution and all that stuff. But a book that tells me what are my societal rules? I decide what my damn societal rules are. Well, that's right? a challenging one to break because society does project. It projects those rules on you. I mean, society will tell you those rules. You, and you decide. Bullshit. Listen, um, right now they can't see us, but we can see each other. Right. And you can see I'm not white. Right. I don't play the color card. I get messages from people all over the world saying, oh, you're 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 uh, I'm, I'm so proud of you. You're an inspiration. You know, more uh, colored people uh, like you. What? How do you how do you deal with people of color? How, how do you deal with white people because they're holding us colored people back? And I go, number one advice, number two advice, number three advice. Don't play the color card. Shit happens every time. I mean, I could I'll tell you stories. And three days ago, shit happened. I'm living in, in Norway. Trust me, 98% of the people are not of ethnic origin, okay? Shit happens to me here every day. They're ignorant, and that's all they are. Don't play the color card. Be your ultimate version of yourself. People will love you. Life is love. You're going to go through crap. They're just ignorant. But if you are every, every moment of the, your day, truly focus on what you're doing. But it's not an ego base. We're not talking about feeding ego. We're talking about, I am so freaking excited. I'm so in love. I'm so pumped. I am so, people pick up on that thing. And you're a magnet. People, no matter what color, what religion, like, I want to be around this guy or girl. And that is what life is all about. That's why people become the center of attention. It's not your pocketbook or your fancy car. It is you, baby. And that's how it works. That's how it works. But how do you get there is forgive yourself. Cry a lot. Cry a hell of a lot. Go through all the shit in the past. And it's okay to go through that. But don't blame anybody. Blame yourself. When you were four years old, no, it wasn't your fault. It was that ignorant parent, that ignorant person. Fine. But right now, you cannot be blamed. You cannot be a victim because you're holding your stuff back. <sighs> I am me. I went through some stuff. But right now, the whole freaking future ahead of me is mine. I'm overweight. I can eat an orange. I can eat apples. I could go for a walk. I got this. I don't have a job. I'm going to get a job because I'm going to be bright. I'm going to be so excited. Just on my enthusiasm energy alone, when I walk in a room, I will differentiate myself from everybody else who's going for this damn interview. I am lit. Do you understand? Now, I'm not saying you have to be this excited. I'm from New York City. We're very, and I'm also in Puerto Rican to, to put everything out there. So we're very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way we're wired. But I'm saying is that you could be like that on the inside. Understand? Be passionate and love for you. And everything about you, but not ego-based. It's not ego. Ego is, is horrible. When I was in doing the dot-com days, I made a lot of money, a lot of success. My would come home, my wife said, you can barely fit your head through the door. Your ego was so big. She actually told me those were the worst <laughs> years of our marriage. And because she told me that we had this talk, I, I absolutely do not allow my ego back in my life. And as much as I'm on stage and I do things all over the world, 
baby, that ego is buried, dead you know, <laughs> in concrete. The world is not, you know, who cares? It's not about ego. It's about love. It's about not taking it in by giving it out. You go to bed exhausted because you love so many people, you try so much. And at the end of the day, let's get a realistic story of the st as an entrepreneur. You go to bed at night, you're exhausted. You gave everything you got. I followed Thomas' advice, Alan's advice. I loved as many people as possible. I tried, I was a polite, I, was, I smiled, I, I really did care. But at the end of the day, I didn't sell anything. Nobody answered my phone calls. Everybody said, no, no, no. And you are exhausted. I mean, I, damn, the other day, I could barely put my head up at 10 o'clock and I was fried. I felt I got no feedback from anybody. Everybody wanted from me, everything from me, just like just the other day. I just gave, gave, gave the whole day. I went to bed. I go, I didn't get anything today. And I go, it was a good day. It's not about getting back. You'll get back. But it's not a, like a reciprocation of one. I give you one, you give me one. It, it doesn't work that way. But by giving love, what you're doing is planting these insane seeds all over the place and it's sprouting all over. And they may not come back to you, but it changes everything. People who listen to me out there are going, what is this guy talking about? And I'm talking about is... This is June 2020. I'm 54 years old. Puerto Rican. <laughs> You're looking good for 54 there, Thomas. Thank you very much. Now people could Google me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Puerto Rican, brought up in Lower East Side, New York, in the projects. Poor as crap, living on government food. And now some executive, and I'm an executive in Oslo, Norway, head of all the Nordic countries, maybe head of all of Europe for IBM, blah, blah, blah. How do you go from nothing to this? And where I'm at now, it's not even... This is just a resting place, right? I'm not even warmed up, right? How do you do that? You really got to believe in you. And you really have to love people. And in the moment that you meet every single person, don't have a hidden agenda. Don't have a distraction. When you listen to somebody talk to you, don't say, oh, I'm going to say this next. What are you doing? Just listen to them. And then be authentic and say, wow. And just answer them or say something else. Be in the moment. And people are like, wow, I, I felt this person. It, it, let's, let's Just for a moment on that, do a lot of talking. This is important. When you have a conversation and you're all done, does that person remember what you said or do they remember what they felt when they met you? My goal, and I say this on stage all the time, I ask people, do you hear me? Hundreds of people, thousands of people go, yes. I go, I don't care. I go, do you feel me? Then you see people pause and they go, yeah, yeah. I go, now you've had a moment. That's the power of you. You to have a conversation with somebody, you make sure they don't just hear you. They felt you and they'll remember you forever. They'll go, wow, I remember talking to that guy. I can't remember his name. I barely remember what he looks like, but there's something about him. And that's because you left a feeling. Which comes from your energy. And I can feel your energy through Skype right now. It is infectious. It is traveling to England, the land of holding all that stuff inside. And I can feel it. One of the questions is, how do you find that energy? Because I say to entrepreneurs all the time, they tell me I don't have enough time. And quite often I say it's nothing to do with the amount of time. It's the amount of energy. Because they sit down and watch something like Netflix in the evening. Well, they've got time somewhere in there, but they don't have energy to use the time. You have energy. Like, how do you find that energy within you to spread the love, to spread the joy, to commit, to share your messages? Where does your energy come from? You asked me to be on this podcast, so I give you everything I got done. I love you. Alan, you asked me, and I said yes, and I'm going to give you everything I got done. It's that simple. It's not like, oh, I'm going to use my energy now. Man, you had reached out to me, and, I, and, I'm, I, and you wanted some love. I'm giving you love back. That's it. Why would I hold back? Again, remember I said, be in the moment. I'm being in the moment. Do you really think in my mind I'm thinking the way I'm behaving, the words I'm using, did I care what other people – I don't care what people are listening right now because everybody right now knows I'm being authentic. This is not bull. You get everything I got. Every conversation I had, you get everything I got. The only time it doesn't work is when I meet somebody who's so – their facade is so <laughs> – oh, my – I ain't got no time to give that person energy because the reality is I remember years ago I would – Try to give energy to everyone in every conversation. I would, I would be dead at five, five, three o'clock in the afternoon. So there are some people who are just not ready for it, right? Or, or the flip side, because I love flipping things. When something doesn't work, just flip it. The flip side is people who are expecting it. People who are vampires and look just to suck people's energy and time. You're not that person, right? No, I'm definitely you, not that person. No, I give as I much as I. No, I, but you, you, you know. We talked and I, like any human being, within the first few seconds, you could judge the person. And I 
said yes to you. And so where does the energy come from? The energy is within all of us. Let's flip it around. You're with the guy or girl. You've been so excited. Finally, you're going to be alone with this person. How much energy do you have in that moment? <laughs> all of the energy in the world. <laughs> we all have it. We all have it. She says to you, I love you. Kiss me passionately. How much energy do you have in that moment? I'm British. It wouldn't show on the outside, but it's definitely <laughs> there. <laughs> Cultural differences. I love it. <laughs> I love you too, baby. <laughs> My point is, well, the energy will show up eventually. Um, <laughs> the, the point is, is that we all have energy for what we love and we feel. And I'm so excited that you give me the opportunity for me to express myself to you. Hence, I have infinite energy, right? And to the Netflix thing, sorry, just one last thing. No, no, go. I mean, I love watching my evening Netflix too. Sometimes when I'm exhausted, I need someone else to do the entertaining for me. And Netflix is that outlet. If you find something decent, sometimes it's nothing ever on. And hope all the networks die because it should be all about streaming. But that's a whole other topic. <laughs> it's okay. And that's when that's an example of forgive yourself, right? And that's what I do at night. Sometimes it's at nighttime. I go, I'm not going to feel guilty that I'm not online and I'm not hustling. I'm not trying to make my passive income and have my six company and all this crap. I need somebody else to do a little lifting now, a little relaxing. And it's okay. Be nice to yourself. But don't plan your whole day around your Netflix. Reward yourself. I have given everything I got. I've loved as many people as I can. I hope I made a difference in people's lives. And with all that, that's going to affect my startup. That's going to affect my vision and everything. And, and, and here's another thought. I could do this all day. You have a startup that you, where you are now. You have your business model where you are now, your revenue model. And you went out there and you pitched. You did everything you can. And at the end of the day, it's 4.30, 6.30 at night. And there's no, no success. You know what's going to happen? Is that actually the next day or a week from now or a month from now, someone will come to you and you're going to realize that your business model is wrong. You need to shift left or right. Your revenue model is wrong. And that's what it is. Don't be in love with your idea and your whatever your vision is. It is must change. It must mature just like you are, right? You shave. On the next day, a little bit grows on your beard. The next day, another one grows. And then the more grows, more. Every day is dynamic. Things grow and change. Your body changes and ages. And so should your ideas and your thinking. You meet someone, come home and say, is my business model still accurate? Is my demographic still accurate? Should I change my revenue model to a freemium? Or should I do move it up to gold, silver? You should reflect and reflect. I haven't said that word enough. You want to mature and grow? Reflect. Forever reflect. If you don't spend, holy crap, a third, if not more, of your day reflecting, reflect on everything and you will grow. But reflect and call your bull. That's the key. Don't reflect, say, oh, that was interesting. That's a form of reflection. But if that's all you do, you're going to go nowhere. You reflect, oh, that was interesting. You go, but why was I uncomfortable? Now answer that freaking question. Don't reflect and go, oh, that was uncomfortable. Oh, okay, let me move on. Nay, you didn't grow. Why was I uncomfortable? That's because when she said that, it reminded me that I... Don't do that really well. That wasn't a good moment for me. Now you're growing. Now you're growing. I love the thought of reflecting for a third, Thomas. I haven't thought of it in that terms of every day reflecting and reflecting. I do a daily thing where I write down what's going well, what's not going well, what could I do better? And I ask myself those questions. And then I have a monthly reflection that's bigger, that asks some different questions about What's this area of my life happening and what's this area? And quite often you go, well, I'm not receiving the results I want in this area of life. What am I doing to create the bad results and what do I need to do differently? And reflection for me is the process of asking myself repeated questions that helps me draw out what I need to change. How do you do it? I reflect in a moment, for example, Tuesday evening, three nights ago, because people don't know what night it is. This, this podcast can be whatever. So three evenings ago, I left an event I uh, was invited to. And the CEO of the company who invited me to the event spent the whole evening with her. And then after the, the event, it was a dance show. It was amazing. Absolutely incredible experience. Afterwards, the dance company was outside in the reception and there were drinks and food and we're all drinking, getting to know each other and stuff like that. And after I was leaving and I said goodbye to everybody, but I couldn't get the CEO because she was talking to a whole bunch of people. So I left and I felt I was so rude. I tried to get her attention, but she, but I felt what, how disrespectful was that? And I reflect and I go, if that was her, I go, if for me, I don't, that's not who I am. 
but I can't just go in a whole bunch of people say, hey, goodbye. That's, that's right. So I stopped. I literally left the building. I walked about 50 feet or 20 meters, whatever country you're in, stopped, took out my mobile phone, and I wrote, wrote the most sincere, longest SMS because I knew if her phone was off, she at least would get that as soon as she turned her phone on at the end of the evening. And I apologized and I told her how uncomfortable I was, that I would, did not mean to be so impersonal after such a beautiful evening of her letting me into her place and everything to experience the beautiful dance. And she wrote me at like midnight that night, the most beautiful reply back. I reflected because that's not me. I'm better than that. How could I have handled that moment better? So I called my bull in that moment. I wasn't very good then. So I then, instant reflection. You know when you weren't at your best. I wouldn't wait to the end of the day. I would right then and there deal with myself because right then and there you could ask yourself a real question is, why wasn't I at my best? Why didn't I go over? Why didn't I or why did I Deal with your real stuff right then and there. It's going to hurt because you're going to go, God, am I that type of person? And they go, yeah, I am. But then how can I fix that? I've gone back to, had a conversation with somebody, walked away, and I literally made a U-turn after about three minutes of reflecting going, "Uh -uh, I can't do that. Go back to the person and go, listen, I said this. I said that. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. What I meant to say was this. And I truly hope you didn't misinterpret what I said. But I cannot, cannot continue having you think that I'm this person and I said these things and I was stupid in that moment and I'm sorry. You should see that person go, you just had to get, you just made a friend for life. But the only way you achieve that is by reflecting, calling your bull and then going back and being the ultimate version of yourself. I always reflect all day long, all day long. That's tough to own up to that stuff. That's tough you have to, to. You have to. But think, look, 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 I'm being dead serious. If you do, let's call that the momentary reflection where you, do something you know wasn't right, you reflect, and then you go back and fix it. You know how many friends, you know how many, how happy you're going to make? You're going to change the world. You're going to change the world. You're going to change people's lives. You're going to change your life. You're now going to end the day and go, God, I almost had a perfect day. But I was that close to having a horrible day. It is so hard. I'm not saying this. It's not, gonna be, it's not easy. Life is hard, but life is love. You're in love with someone. You're in a relationship with somebody. It's not going to be perfect, but it's worth it. You're in a relationship with yourself. You're not going to be perfect, but it's worth it, right? Your startup is not going to be perfect, but it's worth it. It's definitely not going to be perfect. No. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be perfect. I've learned no. that along the way. There is no story of the perfect startup. I mean, don't take it personal when your startup fails, right? It's going oh, to. It's, we're yeah. going to fail at some point, And most of the time you don't see the failures because people don't talk about them, but it's going to happen. Exactly. All of my startups, I've never sold my, out my startups and made millions or anything like that. I was, I didn't have that pass. I did my startups because I needed to do, I need to bring this baby to be born. I did startups out of because this is what I needed to do. And they failed and, and in many ways they succeeded. And you know, if I want to make my ego feel better, oh, I did okay. <sighs> you know, they failed, but through the process of going through those startups, it helped me to become who I am and I grew and stuff like that. And I also cried and I also said, my God, I, I'm a failure. All these people are doing startups and all the successes and I can't do this. Why can't I do this? And I, 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 I. But you know what? At the end of the day, I look back now and go, wow. But it helped me to call my bull and for me to be more centered. Well, it's interesting because if I could paraphrase and I think what I'm hearing you saying is don't build the startup for the result of the startup. Build the startup for who you have to become to have a successful startup. Yes. And whatever that startup becomes, that is its destiny. That's the way I would end that paraphrasing. Your startup at the end of the day will not be what you envision it from day one. Um, the guys at the, was it Uber? No, Airbnb. Sorry. The famous story of Airbnb. I don't have all the details, but I love the little piece that I remember. And that is when they first started starting off Airbnb, no, no investor, no VC wanted to invest in them. So they had a really cool idea to make money. They uh, bought from a manufacturer breakfast cereal. This was when Obama was running for his campaign for president. And they, the manufacturer made little Obama cereal. <laughs> so they were selling Obama cereal for profit. And they sold hundreds of thousands of these boxes of Obama cereal. And they said that we were so broke, they ate Obama cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner as the startup because that's the only food they had. <laughs> But Airbnb, in its first days, when it was in the garage or in their bedroom, whatever, you know, these stories are, it was funded by Obama cereal. You know, you do what you got to do. 
and you just turn it into a story. Like I said, the stuff that happens to your past is just a story. Turn all that stuff, it's a story, but it doesn't control me. It's just a story from the past, you know? It's just a story. Don't let it hold you. It doesn't own you. It's just a story. Oh, it's horrible. You, they should never do this to me. Okay, I get that. Are you done crying? I don't mean to be mean, but it's just a story. They're stupid people. Who are you now? Oh, who are you now? Oh, oh, oh. Who are you right now? And then when people really reflect, go, wait a minute. I've never really thought of who I am at this very second. Then they feel this liberty of like, I can make, actually make your choice of who I am, what I want to do. I can put my finger in my ear. I can put my, I can determine everything. Yes, they have, you've just broke their chains. Deep stuff. It is. This is not quite how I expected this morning's podcast to go. It's actually far better. (laughs) You didn't expect this from the Nordic director of innovation for IBM? Uh, No, I, this was not. (laughs) No, you know I have why? a whole list you know, of questions that I've not asked because I've loved it. You know it. why? Why? Here's the irony of the whole thing. is because I don't define myself as a Nordic director of IBM. That's just a title on a piece of paper called a business card, right? I am Thomas Inglero. I'm a person. I'm who I am. And then right now, there is a mutually beneficial relationship between me and IBM, and that's wonderful. But I also have other parallel mutually beneficial relationships with everybody else on the planet Earth. And that's how I see the world. I don't live for a job. I live for love. So is there a process to uncovering who you are? Because I think that's a really tough question to wow. ask. Like how, I, I always like to get practical. Is there something you can give me, the listeners, my team at Pop-Up, that we can do to be able to uncover who we are so that we truly know it? So I have to use the words of um, one of my Simon Sinek, who I think everybody probably knows Simon, right? Simon rocks. Simon's from New York. I really hope I run into Simon one day and we just argue all night long. I think that would be one of the funnest nights in the the world ever, just arguing with Simon. Um, And he says, you know, know your why. And of course, he's not the first person in the world to say that. But I think the answer to your question is when you ask yourself, you know, what is my why? And you do that constantly over and over and over. That's part of the reflection process, what we were talking about before. And you have to get to the moment that I, the story I told you about when I dropped the, my bag, plastic bags of food in the street and my whole world imploded into, my whole life imploded into that moment. You got to get there. And I'm not hoping, I really don't want to wish anybody to have that moment. It cost me everything because I realized actually that the last 45 years of my life weren't totally bull, but I did everything based on blame, suffer, victim, to get there, you better reflect and reflect and reflect. And I'm saying reflect and blame yourself. Reflect, blame yourself. That is so hard. That is so hard. This is not an easy thing to do. But what comes out of it, though, is this really beautiful version of you that the one that, that version of you that you see when you wake up in the morning, that, you know, that first moment you wake up in the morning, you, you haven't opened up your eyes, but you realize that you're awake. That moment is your most centered moment of the day where you're like, yes, I feel love me i feel good you don't say i love me but you just feel good you feel connected you feel centered everything feels great in that moment and then you start thinking about the job you start thinking about all these other things and life goes to hell but in that centered moment when you reflect and call your bull and then fix it or just say yeah i could do that better then you that moment actually starts popping up more and more throughout your day and then eventually it becomes this long part of your day because you're just flowing but it's not, it's, trust me, man, this ain't, look, I'm not there. I'm, I'm doing it now. So it's very clear to everybody. I am, I'm, there are no gurus. And a guru will tell you that it's a lifelong process and you're in this. I'm doing this right now. As I talk to you right now, I am listening to myself and I'm constantly saying, am I giving everything I got? Am I being authentic? Am I full of bull? Not. This is raw. And I don't care what, I truly don't care what people think about this because it's not that I don't disrespect you. It's that, this is me. Now I'm from the projects where what we did was fight. And then my boys back in the projects were things like, yo, Thomas is soft, man. What's wrong with that brother? I'm like, they ain't gonna think that. That's like, yo, love. Life is love. He's full of love. And what, what are you afraid of being like that? Just be yourself, you know? Listen to me. Everybody loves a hug. If a stranger came up to you and said, can I give you a hug? You probably would slap him. But in your heart, you go, God, I actually need a hug. Who doesn't freaking need a hug? At the moment, I need a lot of hugs, Thomas. That's what I'm saying. You get a big one from me right now, a couple of thousand kilometers away from each other, right? But that's my point. We all need a hug. 
especially after listening to this podcast episode, you, everybody needs a hug right now. So everybody just hug yourself, right? Just hug yourself. You deserve it. And hug you, just hug yourself throughout the day. Forgive yourself. You can be better. Reflect. Forgive yourself for not being the ultimate version of yourself. Keep on growing. It's a process. But what happens after a day, a week, a month, you become more you and people feel you. And they, they just like, wow, what's up? What's going on with you? And you're just going, I'm being me. You're in a shit job. Excuse me, I'm like cursed. Sorry, I'm trying not to curse. You're in a job you don't like. Um, <laughs> working for a boss that you don't like. You could still be the ultimate. You don't have to sit there and be pissed off and stuff like that. If you're so happy with yourself and stuff, you know, do that crappy paperwork or fill out that database that you do repetitive, repetitive work all day long. You talk to people, good morning, good afternoon, how are you doing? But just, just glow and people are like, you know what? We have to use this person for something else because they're, 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 there's something happening with them. Or somebody in the hallway, some other department goes, who's that person over there? Opportunities will happen. People will meet. But it, it only comes when you're glowing, not when you're, I'm a victim. Life sucks. Right? Glow, baby. Shine. Be, be the ultimate version of you. You know, Be who you were meant to be. I love And that. forgive yourself. Yeah. And love yourself. Yeah. Sounds like innovation of character. Every yes, day. Sir. How can I be slightly more of who I really am and who I want to be? Yeah, yeah. You were meant, you were all here to be us. We're not supposed to be a copy paste of each other. How boring is that, right? Yeah, you nailed it, Alan. You, you summarized it very well. And I, to everybody out there, I truly love you. And um, if you're at that point in life where you go, you know, this guy's full of bull, then I want you to ask yourself one question. Why do you think that? Why am I making you uncomfortable? Seriously, what vision do you have? What taste comes in your mouth that what I said, what I said the last whatever, how long I've been talking, why do I make you uncomfortable? Try to reflect on that. Try to have the picture come in your head. What is it? Deal with that moment. And then you're going to learn a bit about yourself and then you grow. Thomas, you have bought the energy. You've been incredible. What can I and the audience do to support you? Or where can we find out more about you? Or what can we do for you? Sure. So first of all, Alan, it is an honor. <laughs> that you brought me on your podcast. I'm holding my heart as well. Truly, I thank you and I thank everybody out there for listening. That's number one. And if people would like to listen to my podcast, I have my own private podcast called Soul of Innovation. And that's available on iTunes and all the platforms, Spotify and all that. And uh, I should talk like this all the time. The last episode I did, I actually woke up, I was in my pajamas. I went over to the PC, grabbed the mic and I just recorded <laughs> right out of bed because I had something to say. So it's raw me, you know, it's really raw me. <laughs> uh, so if people want to listen to the podcast, they can do that. Or and if you want to, you know, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, you know, Thomas Inglero on all those platforms. And on my website is inglero.com, A-N-G-L-E-R-O.com. So uh, what I ask everybody out there is um, if you want to be inspired, continue listening to Alan's podcast and everything you're doing, Alan. Everybody should continue doing that. And if you want some more inspiration, listen to my podcast, Soul Innovation. And let's just start there. And I'm honored to have had this time with you, Alan, and everybody else. Thank you. It has been incredible. And I hope it leads to more opportunities to do more with you. I've been rocked by your energy. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. You can have any life you want to. Choose to build something cool. Choose to take action. Choose to work to make your dreams become reality. Stand out. Be different. Be yourself. Be a rebel entrepreneur.